well. Good evening and welcome to Grow here at Urban Life Church. My name is Warren and I've got some amazing guests with me this evening. We've got Chris. Are you well, dude? Hello, everyone. Yeah, Hello. Good. Hey, good. Yeah, nice well. to see you talking and not singing. Thank you. Hey, Thank that's you. great. And we've got Sean Pile. How are you? Yes, I'm well. Hi, everybody. Yeah, you get a surname. He doesn't get a surname. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Chris. <laughs> Chris van der Berg and Sean Pile. Yeah. Good to have you guys, man. And how are you, Rebecca Clark? I'm good. Thank yeah? you. I have a debate. So Rebecca is actually Brazilian. Is it? What? <laughs> what? Can you believe? Is it Rebecca or Hebecca? Hebecca. With an H. Hebecca. 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 Yeah. Hebecca. Yeah. Hebecca. Well, we've got Hebecca as well. Oh. Let's see if you can uh, put that in the comments and spell it correctly. That would be great yeah. to see. <laughs> yeah. I wish well, you could hear. Yeah. <laughs> it would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome again to Grow. And here at Grow, we love to discover Jesus on every page. So what we're doing is we are looking at some scriptures. We're diving a little bit deeper. And we're trying to see if we can find Jesus as we look through some incredible stories uh, in the Old Testament. And tonight, we're going to be talking about David, which is really exciting. And that's why these guys are here. They're going to each take a portion of David's life. And they're going to be talking about how that particular aspect of David points us towards Jesus. Jesus. And let me tell you, let me smack my mic on my hand. <laughs> let me tell you that you are in for a treat. They've got some great things to share with us tonight. But before we get there, we it is the first Wednesday of the month, and we yeah. just did a drive through. It was yeah. quite cool, hey? Great. So, what was your favorite part of the drive through, Sean? Uh, it was cold, firstly. <laughs> was that your favorite was it part? <laughs> that was my favorite part. I just loved uh, just hanging out with, uh, with, with, our, you know, with the community, you know, and just praying with people and yeah. just chatting and. And just hearing what they're what, what they're going through and and um, yeah, just praying with them. I loved it. That's brilliant, yeah. man. And you, Bex? Yeah, I was in and out, so it was great to see people and just people coming. It is cold, it's, it's so cold. just the fact that people actually came. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's well done, Urban yeah. Life. Well done. You guys are amazing. <laughs> and you, Chris? What was your favorite part? Um, I love praying. Mm. So yeah. it was cool being part of the prayer team. Um, the worst part for me was not being able to lay hands on people. <laughs> so <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's great. That's cool. Well, Andy also has a great comment. Uh, again, we can see your comments live. So we'd love to, throughout tonight, if you have any questions or you have any comments that you'd like to make, please put them in the chat. We'd love to see them. So Andy, a little bit earlier, said, it was great to see some people in the drive through tonight, mm -hmm. braving the cold and the wet, loved all the volunteers at Urban Life Church, yeah, and they yeah. know how to have a good time together. So it really was brilliant. One of my favorite things was that um, people have actually been joining our church being online, which mm -hmm. has been really cool. And it's the first time they ever are seeing one of our church buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. awesome. It's so yeah. cool. So had a few people like that. It was so cool to show them around a little bit and connect with them face to face rather than just yeah. uh, online. Cool. So it was really cool. But hey, in case you missed it, here's a recap video of the drive through. So check it out. Isn't that so cool? That was brilliant. Awesome, guys. So we're going to head straight into tonight's teaching. And uh, Sean is going to kick us off right over here as we talk a little bit about David and how we discovered Jesus on every page. So, Sean, I've got my notebooks, uh, my notebook, and I'm ready to go. So go for it, man. Cool, man. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be speaking about uh, David as a shepherd. And um, when I initially thought about um, shepherding, um, this is one of the ideas I had. Um, we're going to show a video uh, of, of what I expected. Ah! <laughs> 
Okay, so I don't know about you, but that's what I thought when I first um, initially thought about shepherding. It's like the shepherd is sitting under his nice tree and relaxing, and the, and the sheep are grazing on the rolling hills, and maybe he's reading his favorite novel on his tablet. Uh, you see what I did there? Tablet. <laughs> but anyway, uh, or maybe, maybe you, um, you, you thought about shepherds uh, like in the, nat- in the nativity scene. Uh, sitting on, on the floor, gazing at baby Jesus on the first, uh, first night of Christmas. Um, I'm not sure if you guys maybe <laughs> thought that. But uh, actually, uh, what, uh, what shepherding is, is, is quite, quite different and contrary to that. So I'm going to show you another video now and to see an idea of what shepherding actually is. Well, so you could see it's not really easy being a shepherd. I love the way the goat ran up the mountain. And you know when the shepherd leaves the 99 to follow the one? That's the one you got to follow. So, so yeah, you can see it's, it's, you need quite a lot of endurance to make it through the day. Um, it's tough out there. It's lonely. It's, it's a dirty job. Um, and, and, you know, the, the weather sometimes doesn't play to your advantage. You know, it's, it can be hot. It can be cold. So being a shepherd is not... Uh, it's not what, what I thought, uh, just relaxing, you know, under the trees and stuff like that. So, and, you know, the shepherd also has that rod in his hand. And that rod is not just so he can have a walking stick. Um, it's actually to fiercely protect the sheep that he cares about. It's, uh, it's something they uses to fight off predators um, and to, to, to maybe bring the sheep back if it's, if it's away from the flock. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really like a weapon and something he hangs on to. Um, so just, just, like, just like what we've seen now, um, David did the same for his sheep. And um, I want to read something from 1 Samuel 17 to 36 to see the, this, the backdrop of what David actually did. And here he speaks to Saul um, when, when just before he, met, uh, he wanted to fight Goliath and, and he was speaking to Saul. This is what he said. He, uh, he said, I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. When a lion or bear comes and st- and steals a lamb from my flock. I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to bear and the lion. So imagine David's passion when, when he's taking care of his sheep. I mean, this, this, uh, this scripture really ca- captures his, his passion. It captures the, his, his love and care for um, for the sheep that he, that he, that he had. I mean, it, 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 doesn't, it wouldn't take someone uh, with, with less passion to go and fight a bear or to fight a lion if it comes for any of, any of his sheep or, or goats. Um, so we can see that there, David's heart was all in, hashtag all in. So when we look at, at Jesus, now we see a good shepherd there, but we see a great shepherd in Jesus because he gave his life mm. for his sheep. And... We see in John 14 to 15, Jesus here speaks. He says, I alone am the good shepherd. I know those whose hearts are mine, for they recognize me and know me. Just as my father knows my heart and, my, and I know my father's heart, I am ready to give my life for the sheep. And that was Jesus saying that. And this, it reminds me of the song. I'm sure a lot of you guys know it and, and, and it, and the song is Reckless Love. And these are some of the words that, that, really, that really grasped me when I, when, I, when, I, when I actually read these, these words. The overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It chases me down, mm. fights till I'm found, and it leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you gave your life away. The overwhelming never-ending, reckless love of God. So we can see that from a, 
place of love and care, David and Jesus protect and provide for their sheep. I mean, it's, it's so, if you look at it, it's, it's something that you want to try and, and encompass and encapsulate how deep their love is for their sheep. And this is something I, uh, I, was, I was pondering over, and, this, and, I, and I believe the Spirit laid this on my heart, um, that, that really encapsulates uh, what love and care they have for their sheep, especially Jesus. And this poem was actually written by a shepherd, and it was written about a shepherd. And this is fascinating when I read this. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace and a quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along his footsteps of righteousness so that I bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. Your comfort of your love takes my fear away. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. Mm. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why should I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. And that's Psalms 23. It's such a different way to read it from the TPT. It like gave me a totally different perspective. So I believe that as a shepherd, David wrote this from a position of what he did for his sheep mm. and knowing how much more Jesus would do as the great shepherd. Mm. So just as a recap, this, this is what I found, that Jesus laid his life down so we could be saved. Mm. And Jesus protects and provide us, provides for us from a place of great love and care. So that's, <clears throat> that's what I discovered. That's amazing, eh? Yeah. Well that's done. Awesome. I love the passion, Brilliant. I love the excitement. Wow. I don't think I'll ever read Psalm 23 the same that's, again. That's what I felt when I first read it. Like, <laughs> I was that. waiting for you to sing way. Reckless Love though. I was yeah, almost, you should have yeah, like, like, sang it, eh? Like, you should have okay. done it. No, you don't you want were there. See, come on. <laughs> so I, lo I love what you were sharing there, Sean, is that, that David was a shepherd. Mm. He had an incredible heart for his sheep. He cared for them, protected for them, uh, protected them, provided yeah. for them. And actually that shows us Jesus, who's our shepherd, exactly. and he does the same. He cares for us, he protects us, he provides for us. 100%. Those are incredible things. Yeah. And so, Sean, can you help us quickly? Mm. What was the one most helpful tip for you to, to arrive at this kind of conclusion around a shepherd? So anybody that wants to study the Bible yeah. and get there too, I think it's easy to go like, oh, wow, well, they've just got it together. But, but we know actually you, mm. you're a normal guy, just like everybody else, and you found something amazing. So how, how did you get there? Just one helpful tip. Read Psalms 23. <laughs> <laughs> that really gave me a, so, such a different outlook on, on a shepherd. Yeah. You read it in a different way. Because you normally read it in NIV and, it's, and it's, you, you've, you've read it so many times mm. and it's ingrained in you and you read it that way. But when you have a different perspective, it's, it's such a mind-opening thing to do is mm. just read it from a different perspective. Yeah. And I read it from a perspective of, of a shepherd. Yeah. And it was like, whoa, okay, they really love their sheep to mm. be able to do all of these things. Yeah. And that's helpful as well as if you've mm. read it a couple of times, like maybe a scripture that you maybe know quite well, you can actually just try it in a different yeah. version yeah. and it's just, Oh wow. Okay. There's exactly. something I didn't see before. Just unlock something. Yeah. Really, really good. Well, that was really great. And now we're going to hand over to Chris, who's going to take us from David being a shepherd into the next season of his life. So Chris, take us away. Thanks man. Awesome. So I, I love what, uh, Sean was sharing that. David's a shepherd who cares. Jesus is a shepherd that cares. Um, but I'm going to jump into something a little bit more feisty. And we're going to look <laughs> at David as the warrior. So what I love um, looking at his life is that you see 
there's these qualities that run throughout his story of David. Is there's parts where he's a shepherd and there's parts where he's a warrior, but you see that they always cross paths throughout his life. Um, so just to give you a little bit of context, uh, I'm pretty sure most of us know the story of David and Goliath. It's the classic superhero story where the little guy defeats this big enemy. If you don't know this story, um, basically what happens is Saul is king of Israel and the Israelites are fighting the Philistines. And there is a Philistine giant champion whose name is Goliath. And what happens is every morning he goes out uh, towards the army and he starts sh uh, screaming and shouting at the Israelites. And he tells them that you need to give me your best fighter. And if your best fighter can beat me, then Israel can have the Philistine army or the Philistine nation, Philistine land. And uh, he says vice versa, that if I defeat your greatest um, man or warrior, that the Israelite nation belongs to us. So the Israelites are so intimidated by this giant who screams at them every day. Um, and what happens is David is tending his sheep, uh, just as Sean was sharing. And his father comes to him and he asks David, I need you to take food to your brothers. And the brothers are actually fighting in the battle or too scared to fight. So David does, he listens to his father and he goes to the um, brothers and he asks, he gives them the food and he, he inquires of the brothers, how, how is everyone doing? Are you guys shop? Are you cool? Are you lacquer? Um, and uh, he overhears the giant screaming these things over the nation. And David the warrior that he is, is kind of like, hold up, this, this isn't right. Um, so he actually says, I will kill this giant that opposes God's people. So I want to just jump in the, into there from 1 Samuel 17, 45. It says, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I'll give you the, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there's a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that this is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you, and he will give all of you into our, our hands. I love that picture. Uh, where David says, I will kill the giant, but God will have his glory. Mm. We see the same thing in John 17, the prayer of Jesus just before he goes to the cross. He says, after saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so mm. he can give glory back to you. Yeah. I love that. Um, we see a picture of Jesus in that. Um, so what happens is David kills Goliath with a single stone. Um, the picture of that one man, so from David's victory. So often I found that um, there's been prophetic word over my life. Chris, you're a man like David. Sean and I were actually having the conversation. It's all, almost like all the music people. Hey, you, you're a man yeah. like David. Because like, you're wow, a the muso. Yeah. yeah. But what I love is actually looking at this, it takes the pressure off of me mm. because I see Jesus, um, David, as Jesus. Mm. And I find myself more in the army's position where I've been too intimidated or too fearful. And one man leads an entire nation into sure. victory. Mm. So just like Jesus died for us <clears throat> on the cross, he leads us all into victory because uh -huh. of him, because of his sacrifice. Um, jumping to 1 Samuel 17, 51. When the, Philistine, when the Philistines saw that the hero was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines to, to the entrance of Gath and to the gates of Ekron. The dead were strewn along the Shrine road to Gath and Ekron. When the Israelites returned from chasing the Philistines, they plundered their camp. David took the Philistines' head and brought it to Jerusalem. Uh, I love this part. It's popped out to me. I've never seen it before. It says he put the Philistines' weapons in his own tent. All right. So... I'm going to jump to Revelation 1 verse 18 quickly. Ooh. Jesus declares, I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death 
and Hades. I hold the keys of life and death. Mm. Jesus says that. Um, so all the weapons that were used to kill and destroy life from the Philistines, where the Philistines' weapons came in to, to, de- to destroy Israel, David brings those weapons into his tent. The same thing happens with Jesus. Is he goes into hell mm. and takes the keys sure. back. Mm. So all the weapons that were used to kill and destroy life mm. are now in the tent of Jesus. Come on. Mm. Wow. What does this mean for us? Um, I think there's so much in it, but we have grace. We have all power. We have all authority um, because Jesus has all rule and all reign over everything. Uh, point number two. All right. So this is a, a, a different section of, of David's life. Um, so what happens is David defeats the giant. Uh, Saul the king is like, who is this man? Um, Saul invites David into the army. David actually becomes a general at the age of 17. Sure. Wow. Sure. That is insane. That is insane. What were you doing at 17? Yeah, yeah. I was playing PlayStation and So technically chilling. you were a general in an army. <laughs> technically I was a general in an army. Uh, but then what starts happening is uh, people, the people of Israel start praising David with Saul in a song, but Saul lands up getting jealous mm. um, uh, because of his own insecurities. So because of this jealousy, they're chilling one night, they're having dinner. You can kind of imagine us sitting at Grow together, having a conversation. Um, Rebecca, imagine you, David, and I'm Saul, and now we're okay. hanging out, and the next moment while we're eating, I pull out a spear and I try to throw you with it and try to kill you. So that's plot pretty twist. much, yeah, plot twist. That's what happened. Uh, the, I think one of the translations says because of his quick skill and limber body, he was able to, to get away. Wow. Um, side note, did you know that Richard Gere actually acted as David in a movie? Um, That's and amazing. The, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Found it out. Blew my mind. The word does say that David was... Um, he was good looking. He was good yeah. looking. So I looked at Richard Gere. I, I had a better picture of Obviously who David was. Obviously that Richard Gere. I mean, who else? Side note. Yeah. Anyway, so David flees because of his limber skills and all of that. Um, and he needs to start hiding from Saul. So I'm going to jump into 1 Samuel 24. We're going to read through this. It says, After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines... He was told David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there and Saul went in to relieve himself. All right, so he had a poop. (laughs) (laughs) David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said that this is the... This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off the corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David was conscious stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. So looking back, judging for myself, if I was David, I would think I had every every right to kill Saul in that moment. But the amazing thing is David had a reverence Mm. towards God. Mm. Um, He was obedient towards God and he actually never touched Saul. Um, Again, I see... We are Saul in this situation. And again, David is a picture mm. of Jesus because, because of our sin where we actually deserve death and punishment, Jesus speaks a better word. Jesus mm. tells a better story for That's us. Good. That's great. Um, just says, yeah, yet he does not and he becomes the sacrifice for us. I love this. Jesus honors us when we don't deserve honor mm. and even in our sin, he still calls out the value of who God has made us to sure. be. So before we were even saved, there's still value upon our lives. David recognized that the Saul was an anointed one. I will not lay a finger on him. Jesus calls out the value of who we are, even in our sin and our rebellion. And then lastly, point number three. Um, David decides to flee Israel, and he actually goes and lives in the camp of the Philistines. 
Philistines. I don't know if I've been saying it right or wrong this whole time. Uh, write down in the comments. Help me out. <laughs> so he actually seeks refuge in the land of the Philistines. Uh, 600 men go with David and uh, with all their wives and children. And uh, he meets a man named Achish. But the Philistines actually recognize, hey, isn't this the man that the people of Israel were singing about? He's not allowed here. Get rid of him. So David has to flee uh, again. And he goes back to a place. Him and his men go back to uh, a place called Ziglag. From there, 1 Samuel 30, it says, When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue the raiding party? Will I overtake them? Um, pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Again, he has a picture of Jesus, the shepherd warrior who is weeping for his people and ready to go out and find them, um, those who are lost mm. or who have been stolen. Sure. Mm. Jumping to number nine, it says, David and 600 men with him came to the Bezel Valley, where some stayed behind. Okay? 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley, but David and the other 400 continued in the pursuit. So David and the 400 men land up going in the pursuit. They win all the wives and children back. Um, but then something drastic happens. Is uh, Jumping to verse 21, it says, Then David came to the 200 men who had, who had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left behind at the Bezel Valley. They came out to meet David and the men with him. As David and his men approached, he asked them how they were. But all of the evil men and troublemakers among David's followers uh, said, because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and children and go. David says, heck no, guys. Um, actually, what's going to happen is that everyone is going to share an equal amount of yeah. plunder. And he actually mm -hmm. makes it a decree uh, in the nation of Israel that even if you didn't fight, you still receive mm -hmm. the plunder. Um, I think for me, that is a brilliant mm. picture, picture of Jesus, Jesus again. And yeah. um, there's actually a parable with, uh, in Matthew 20, verse 1 to 6, the parable of the, parable of the workers, where some men have worked in the morning, some men have walked, worked in the afternoon, and some men yeah. have worked from the evening. Mm. And actually what happens is each man is paid the same wage. Mm. And Jesus says it's like that in heaven, that no matter what time you come in, you receive an inheritance that you Come didn't on. even mm. fight for or work for. Mm. So just to recap, um, number one is one man leads an entire nation into victory and all the weapons used to kill and destroy life are now in the tent of Jesus. Mm. Number two is Jesus honors us when we don't deserve honor. And even in our sin, he still calls out the value of who God has made us to be. Mm. And number three is we receive an inheritance we did not even fight for. Come on. Amen. Wow. Come on. All right. Brilliant. I need water. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I love the uh, Garrett's comment there is like the PlayStation General over here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> that was really good, good, man. You know, one good. of the things I loved about that is um, the way that you, you, you kind of turned that story upside down for me, the story about David and Goliath. And mm -hmm. So many stories you read about in Scripture. It's so easy for us when we read the Bible um, maybe you're like me, yeah. and I, I always see myself as the hero. Mm. So I look at it and I'm like, oh, I'm like Jesus. I'm yeah. not like a doubting Thomas. Are you kidding? Or like, oh, yeah, I'm like the David. I'm going to slay Goliath. Yeah. I'm not the crowd, mm. like in the crowd, scared yeah. and like not, in, not wanting to fight. Yeah. But actually, it's so helpful when we look at scripture and we realize we're not the hero. Yeah. Yeah. And the story's not about us, it's yeah. about Jesus. It's and awesome. he actually pulls us in. So and he gives us plunder and he, yeah. he gives us blessing and he honors us when we don't deserve it and he leads us to victory. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. It's really cool. So I think it's a, it. it's a helpful tip so just like reading in a different version yes. mm. yeah. i think that's a really helpful tip is is try not to look for yourself in mm. scripture look for jesus, look for jesus. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. good hero. Yeah. this is great yeah. Yeah. yeah come on brilliant awesome rebecca it is up to you no no pressure no pressure, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Take us um, home. yeah so i love the stories of david um it's so easy to actually see that jesus um david is a picture of jesus or a type of jesus um, we've, we saw David as a shepherd, as a warrior, and now we're going to see him as a king. Um, and I'm just going to bring you to up to speed. I know that I'm not supposed to keep looking at you guys. But anyway, um, just uh, up to speed, David became a king over Judah in Israel. 
after a while. Uh, so north and south, and south finally united as one. So he was the first king that was able to bring those two together after a long time of not being together. Um, in 2 Samuel 7, uh, God made, makes a covenant with David saying that from his descendants, a kingdom would be established forever which means that from the da David's line, Jesus would be born. So that was a covenant God made with David. Um, but actually, I'm going to not take you from when he was anointed and etc. I'm going to take from 2 Samuel 9, which is a story about David and Jonathan's son. Mephibosheth, shifts. <laughs> Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, that's the name. It's a great name. Yeah. Uh, because you feel like you're speaking in tongues. So if you haven't bapt been baptized in tongues yet, Mephibosheth enough times and that's it. Um, because this story is about a redemptive king, just like Jesus. And, and like clearly we can see ourselves in the story and we can see Jesus. But before we dive in, let me just give you a little bit of context. So Jonathan was Saul's son. Uh, and him and Davy were besties, mm. like best friends forever, forever. Um, and they made a covenant with each other. Uh, and covenants back in the day was a big thing. So they actually got, like, they really, um, they, they respect covenants and actually went through with it. Um, and throughout history, we know that um, if you're a king and there was still king, the previous king's family, they would actually kill them. Mm. Uh, but we see here a different story um, as David actually is a redemptive king. So let's go to Samuel, 2 Samuel 9, 3. There's a lot of weird names. So if I'm butchering the names, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> clearly Hebrew is not my first language, not even the second and never going to be the third. Um, so it says, the king then asked, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so... I want to show God's kindness to them. Zeba, which was Saul's servant, replied, Yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He's crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. By the way, where is he? In Lodabar, Zeba told him, at the home of Makir, which could be Maki, like sushi, Maki, um, <laughs> the son of Amiel. So David sent for him and brought him from the sushi place. His name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. And David says, greetings, Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show you kindness to you because the, pro the promise, the covenant mm. to your father, Jonathan. Sure. I will give you all of the property that once belonged to your grandfather's soul. Mm. And you will eat here with me at the king's table. Mephibosheth bowed respectfully and, and exclaimed, Who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me. Mm. Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and servants are to farm the land for him to produce food for your master's household. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, will eat here with me at my table, at the king's table. Mm. So Ziba replied, yes, my Lord, I will do what you tell me to do. And from that time, Mephibosheth ate regularly at the David's king, at the David, at David's table, like one of the king's own son. Mm. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah. From then on, all of the members of Ziba's household was Mephibosheth's servants. And Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem in eight regularly at the king's stable. So I think it's clear where you can see Jesus, right? Mm. It's all over. Um, we can see ourselves. We can see Jesus. Um, but first of things, oh, I need some water. <laughs> so many beneficial of the that it's just... <laughs> 
<laughs> so first of all, the heart of David was to redeem and restore, not to destroy and dishonor, yeah. and mm. that's Jesus. That's um, David asked, where is Jonathan's mm. son? And the servant said, in Lodemar, Lodebar, which means a place of hopelessness. Mm. Oh, wow. So, and it, for me, just discovering that was like a poof. Wow, yeah, yeah that's amazing. Um, amazing. And then we get introduced to Mephibosheth. His name means the one who destroys or ends shame. Mm -hmm. And here we see David showing Mephibosheth kindness, generosity, uh, mercy. Mm -hmm. um, and he gives Mephibosheth an inheritance that it was not his to have. Mm -hmm. Where most kings would have just taken Saul's wealth, David gave it and gave it away to Mithibosheth as his own child. Um, he welcomed Mithibosheth at his table. Mm. Um, and at the end, David actually ended the shame that Mithibosheth lived under. Mm. He was the crippled one. He, he was the one that actually had zero value in society. Mm. Um, he was an orphan. He was disabled. He probably was poor because if you're rich, you probably wouldn't live in a place that is called hopelessness. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. you probably would have a better taste. Mm. Um, but probably he had no other way or other place to live. And David welcomes him in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem means a place of peace. Mm. Um, so we clearly can see Jesus and we can see ourselves because we live in a place of hopelessness. Yeah. Mm. Our inheritance was death. Mm. Our legacy was shame. But Jesus, in Romans, it says, For when the time was right, the anointed one came and died to demonstrate his love for sinners mm. who were entire, entirely helpless, weak, and powerless to save themselves or ourselves. Now, who of us would dare to die for, for the sake of a wicked person? We can all understand if someone was willing to die for a truly noble person. But Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we we're still lost and ungodly. And there is still much more to say of his unfailing love for us. For mm. through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration, you are now righteousness in my sight. And because the sacrifice of Jesus, you'll never experience the wrath of God. As David invited Mephibosheth to sit at his table, Jesus has invited us to sit and feast at his table. Um, David united Israel and Judah. And one day Jesus will come to unite heaven on earth. Yeah. Mm. Brilliant. Time! Wow. <laughs> I said that I would do that. <laughs> Just because I'm a master chef. <laughs> Can you imagine being Mephibosheth and getting called by David to come to see him? Like knowing that, that the previous kings killed like mm. the other, uh, like any, any, yeah, so it's like David yeah. should have actually then just wiped out his whole bloodline. So can you imagine being Mephibosheth Especially and going like, hey, come for dinner? Yeah, like, yeah. 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 He, he would yeah. think like, hey, so he's going to pull a soul yeah. and throw a knife at me at dinner yeah. or something. Like, I'm sure that's why he like, he bowed down and like, <laughs> mm. I'm your servant. Like, yes. what do you want? Like, yeah. it's actually sure. amazing. Eh? So it was, yeah. There's so many stories of David that points to Jesus. Yeah, that there like, really are. Yeah. You can just do like, Five years of it, yeah. of grow on David. I yeah. Think. <laughs> and one of the things I love about what you were sharing is, you know, I think that that also shows how our attitude towards what we're expecting from God will, mm -hmm. will determine like how we approach exactly. him. And if we think that he's going to just wipe us mm -hmm. out because we've been like these horrible yeah. sinners and whatever, actually like here, David shows he's actually a king of kindness, mm -hmm. you know, and he redeems and restores. I love the things that you shared yeah. there. So it helps it like it shifts my perspective. I go, mm -hmm. Wow, Jesus is on the throne and he has every right to like shun me, yeah. push me away, but instead exactly. he chooses to show kindness. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It is brilliant. Yeah, it's been such a good night. So if you guys have any questions, you're welcome to pop them uh, in the chats as well. And uh, we'd love to ask you, Rebecca, so if you could give one tip to people that would like to dive in a little bit deeper into the Bible. Um, again, like you're a normal person and you brought such great teaching here. So how, how, what is one tip that you can give people to be able to learn themselves? First of all, you're super encouraging. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, I think... Um, 
I love what the meanings of the the names like they bring such clarity yeah because like it's it's for for them it was a word so like Mithibashef when they said those names it was ending of shame uh, when they speak of Jerusalem they they knew that it was a place of hope so I think understanding what the name means in our context I think it's super helpful mm. um, and it's really easy you can literally just put on Google what does that name means mm. in the Bible yeah and they will give you what yeah. it means. So I think that is helpful. It really is helpful because there, there you picked up. It's a place yeah. of shame. You yeah. picked up what his name meant. Yeah. And that, that kind of, it, it brings a bit of depth to the story. Mm. Uh, it's like a little bit deeper than just what's on the surface of the page. Yeah. It's actually cool to be able to do that. Yeah. I actually did that a while ago with uh, a story as well. Is I, I looked at um, uh, Goma and uh, Hosea. And when you look mm. at their words, what their names mean as well, yeah. it brought this like, this like eye-opening, yeah. beautiful truth yeah. about Jesus. Like he's one who saves, he's one who redeems. Yeah. And you go, names wow, are names are, are yeah. really important. Yeah. Yeah. So it is really helpful to check those things out. Yeah, yeah. this has been cool, man. Yeah. I've really enjoyed this. So some, we've had some pretty funny comments coming through. Uh, my favorite one so far is about the PlayStation General. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of encouraging things, just great revelation, really been enjoying it. Uh, let's take a look over here. Uh, Andy thinking it's really funny. Uh, such a good night. I'm not normal. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca is not normal. I'm glad that you picked that up. <laughs> There's actually a really cool comment. I'm just going to quickly jump back up to it. So from uh, Untamed, it says it's an old song, but when others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king. Mm. Even though your life seems filled with ordinary things in just a moment, he can touch you and everything will change. Yeah. When others see a shepherd boy, God just may see a yeah, king. I remember that song. That's a really cool comment over there. I think it's an old song. I don't know. Yeah, Do you know the song? <laughs> Come on, you can give us. No, no, sing it for <laughs> You can give us a verse there. Come on, sure. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things that Kelsey was saying is all the, the musicians are at the table tonight because uh, you, you play guitar and sing and guitar and sing mm -hmm. and you do the, the kangas. You're not really and the. Sing, you sing, no, just not with the mic. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's been really, really cool awesome. to check these things out. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us tonight for Grow. I hope it's been encouraging for you. It's been really encouraging for yes. me sitting on this side. And uh, we've learned some really cool things about Jesus being a shepherd who cares. Uh, he's the warrior that gives when we don't deserve. And he's the king of kindness. And this has helped me really uh, shape my view of Jesus. And it helps me approach him yeah. in a way where I can just go, Oh, wow, mm. like look at Jesus. So well done. You guys have done a really good job. Awesome. Seriously, you Thanks can be proud. Learning, it was really great. <laughs> and then just a reminder to you that we have got a podcast coming out tomorrow. It is Thursday, the 3rd of September at 12 p.m. And uh, Gareth and I had a discussion around direction, motivation, inspiration. It was a really great conversation. And so we'd love to yeah, have you guys check out yeah, lots of Asians mm. to, to <laughs> go up with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so love to have you guys check that out. You can follow us on social media and we will be posting it over there uh, and you can look at that and really hope that it'll be helpful to you but hope you have a great week further yeah, and then we will awesome. see you on sunday morning bring yeah. a friend it's yeah. going to be exciting and we're going to be looking at how our emotions how we can find a win in our emotional life with jesus so yeah. you what guys want to say bye hey goodbye yeah. bye bye now goodbye now <laughs>